Hey there, and happy Friday. It's time for another edition of Crafting and Conspiracies. I'm Sam. We're gonna be designing something. We're gonna be having fun. And I'm just trying to get in the groove. I'm trying to get back in the groove of things. I'm trying to get back into the Friday Crafting and Conspiracies at 7 p.m. If you can't tell, tonight we're gonna to be talking about Dun, 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 CERN. Well, and you know, all the time continuum conspiracy theories that are out there while we make this cute little bunny sitting on a bench. I thought that would be cute for tonight. It's a cute little spring project, you know what I'm saying? Typically when I think about these conspiracy theories, um, things like the Mandela effect, the different timelines, alternate universes, the multiverse, uh, time loops, really all of the time bending prophecies, I mean, uh, the conspiracies, uh, they almost always involve CERN, okay? So what does a widely held of false memories, multiple universes that exist, uh, with duplicates of ourselves and shifting in and out of multiple timelines within the universe have to do with CERN and our conspiracy theory for tonight? Well, we're going to dig into that a little bit more, okay? We're just doing our prep work. Yeah. So the conspiracy tonight is CERN. All right, so I kind of gave everybody an, a little introduction um, about what CERN is or, or what we're going to be talking about. So let's talk a little bit about CERN, right? Um, at CERN, and this is directly from their website, they say that we probe the fundamental structure of particles that make up everything around us. We do so using the world's largest and most complex scientific instruments. Essentially, they're looking for antimatter at CERN, right? Um, they have a huge focus on particle physics. So you may have heard of the Large Hydrogen Collider, which is the world's largest and highest energy particle collider. It was built between 1998 and 2008. So that's how big it is. It took them about a decade to build and it lies in a tunnel. It's about 17 miles, I believe, in circumference and as deep as 574 feet beneath the France and Switzerland border near Geneva, near Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, a collider is a type of particle accelerator that brings two opposing particle beams together um, such that the particles collide. So they have this, if you can picture it, it's kind of like this large, um, tunnel underground with these, um, it's an oval, oval circular kind of, right? And they basically send off these beams, these particle beams, and um, at two opposite ends and get them going and see if they can collide, okay? I know I'm not really into physics. I'm not really into all of that. Um, I did not do my, um, my intro where I say, uh, this is for entertainment and educational purposes only. I like to talk about conspiracy theories here on Friday evenings. Sometimes I do it on other days of the week. And uh, it's just basically for entertainment purposes uh, and some educational purposes only. Okay, do your own research. Be a free thinker. Do you. Okay, that's all we're supposed to do is be authentic, right? We're starving for authenticity. So... Find what it is you like and go for it, right? In particle physics, colliders, though harder to construct, are a powerful research tool because they reach a much higher center of mass energy than fixed target setups. Analysis of the byproducts of these collisions, right? We talked about like sending these beams, these particle beams and colliding them, uh, give scientists good evidence of the structure of the subatomic world and the laws of nature governing it. So it's basically, again, 
antimatter, things that we can't see, right? Dimensions all around us, we just can't see them because we have these senses, right? Like our taste, touch, uh, smell, um, taste, touch, smell, sight, right here. Um, but we can only see that in a, in a third dimension, like on the third plane. Stick with me, okay? Just stick with me, right? Many of the byproducts are produced only by high energy collisions and they decay after very short periods of time. So they'll, they'll shoot these beams, these particles out, they'll collide, and then scientists can look and see what they've produced after they collide. And then they're only here for such a short period of time. And then they basically disintegrate. They disappear into thin air. Um, some would argue that because energy is not, it does, energy doesn't die, it basically just kind of shifts or transforms into something else. It's, it's displaced in other words. So I, I don't know, I don't know what to think of that because they say that once they bar bounce these particles together and scientists observe them and then they disappear, how can I reconcile that with the fact that you're saying that's disappearing, but yet we've been taught all throughout our lives that it's shifted. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't ever go away. It's just um, redistributed somewhere else. And we're talking about energy here, okay? If you recall hearing about the God particle, I don't know if you've ever heard about that, but on July 4th in 2012, um, the Higgs boson was found at CERN. They call it the God particle because scientists uh, discovered that um, the law is the energy says law of energy says it can't be created nor destroys. So the Higgs po uh, boson particle was found at CERN in 2012. Um, and so in layman's terms, it makes the existence of matter and interactions as we know them possible uh, and is responsible for the appearance of the mass of all known elementary particles um, without the Higgs field which is what the Higgs boson was named after. after. Uh, there would just be no atomic elements, no stars, no life in the universe, no us, no cute little bunny with his little glasses. None of that would exist if uh, this Higgs boson particle uh, had not ever existed to uh, create us and everything that we see in and out of our dimension. So it stands to reason that if that's what they're doing at CERN, um, and that's what they've got going on over there, then why wouldn't our universe and timelines and everything in it be altered? Some people think, this is a conspiracy theory out there, um, some people think that because time, as we know it, is linear, so we follow a clock, we follow the sun and the moon cycles, um, so on and so forth, that time is linear. We're living it, we're living, we're born, we have these certain things that we do, we accomplish, we, we crawl, we walk, we go to school, we become adolescents, we become adults, and then we get older, and then we start hitting atrophy, and you know, then we essentially, we're gone, right? And our, our energy is displaced somewhere else, right? So some people think that because time is linear, everything that's happening now has already happened, and that we are just living it out linear, right? I know that's kind of hard for us to wrap our heads around. I've been grappling with it for years since I first heard that. And I'm like, man, it's finally starting to kind of make sense. I'm not saying this is true. This is all alleged, do your own research, have fun with it, whatever. Um, however, some people believe that and I can see finally how they may actually believe that and how they can come to that conclusion because of things like CERN. So because CERN is basically, some people say that it's uh, playing God in other words, right? They're trying to find the, the origin of the universe and um, they're using, you know, essentially taxpayer dollars to, to do it. So their mission statement reads as follows. At CERN, our work helps to uncover what the universe is made of and how it works. We do this by providing a unique range of particle accelerator facilities to researchers to advance the boundaries of human knowledge. The laboratory established in 1954 has become a prime example of international collaboration and their mission is to perform world-class research in fundamental physics, 
provide a unique range of particle accelerator facilities that enable research at the forefront of human knowledge in an environmentally responsible and sustainable way to unite people from all over the world and to push the, the frontiers of science and technology for the benefit of all. And they want to train new generations of physicists, which I think we need, uh, engineers and technicians, of course, and engage all citizens in research and in the values of science. Um, fun fact, did you know that there's another hydrogen, hydrogen, <sighs> hydron collider? It's spelled H-A-D-R-O-N, right? So my, my mouth wants to say hydrogen whenever I say it all the time. Um, so we call it LHC for short. So did you know that there's another LHC right here in Louisiana where I'm from? Uh, and it's built, it's in, under the ground. Uh, and it's called LIGO, and it stands for the Laser Inferometer infer rem, infer Gravitational Wave Observatory. I don't know why that word's so hard for me. Good gracious. And it was designed to open the field of gravitational wave astrophysics through the direct direction of gravitational waves predicted by Einstein's general theory of relativity. So... LIGO consists of two widely separated interferometers, those meters. We're just going to call them the meters because I'm having a lot of trouble this evening. <laughs> Saying those words, man. Um, so it has the two widely separated meters within the United States. One is one in Hanford, Washington, and the other, which is in Livingston, Louisiana, uh, it's operated in unison uh, together to detect gravitational waves. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I think it was in 2015, the, the meter, the LIGO, um, they made history. They um, made the first direct detection of gravitational waves or ripples in space and time produced by a pair of colliding, colliding black holes. Y'all, okay, so this is where I have a problem with it. Okay, look at this, look at this, look at, oh wait. All right, we're gonna put our bunny in and then we're gonna get back to CERN. We're gonna do a little bit of surgery, get him centered. Look at that guy, he's adorable. Here are some of the fishy situations uh, surrounding little CERNy CERN CERN, okay? So conspiracy theorists, by way of the uh, things that they're doing there, um, think that these things could have happened or are happening. Um, they think that they're opening a portal to another dimension and evil spirits are able to enter our universe. Um, before you scoff at this, uh, CERN literally created a black hole in 2012 when they found the Higgs boson. Uh, and what comes out of black holes, black, deep, dark, evil objects and entities, of course, so um, there's not much that we know about black holes, obviously. And if we're if black holes typically exist in space and in the universe where we don't typically see them with our own eyes, but yet we're creating them here on Earth, and we know that that energy doesn't um, it doesn't dissipate; it just just goes back out somewhere. Um, where do those black holes go when we? on Earth are creating black holes in uh, the LHC. Where do those black holes go? And what comes in and out of the black holes? I thought that was an interesting thought process on why people are in an uproar or why there's a conspiracy theory behind what goes on at CERN. We can now see in not only 3D, but we can see in 4 and 5D and dimensional space, which is where the multiverse conspiracy theory comes from. We're saying, okay, we can see everything 3D, but because of string theory, the physicists and scientists at CERN, uh, and not just at CERN, but in other places as well, are saying that there are other dimensions. And so if there are other dimensions, what's going on in these dimensions? Some people believe that there are alternate versions of ourselves. So it's another world just like this one uh, in another dimension. And we're here. This other dimension's here, here, right? And um, that's why we have deja vu sometimes because things are happening in that dimension, not necessarily exactly as they are in our dimension, but 
they do coincide. There is another person like me in another dimension. I'm not saying I believe this. I'm just saying what they believe. That's the conspiracy theory behind it, okay? Let me let me get to design it, okay? So I think CERN be trolling us, if we're gonna be honest. Let's, let's talk about this for a second. If you Google uh, CERN human unaliving ritual, it'll bring you to this video. And CERN says that it was, it's not, they didn't do it. They did not create this video. We're, they're, whatever. It's not from them. That's not what they do. They don't do rituals, yada, yada. However, there was a ritual that was performed by the workers um, while whilst unavailing their new construction. As they unveil new, uh, you know, new things at CERN, they have these like little, um, I don't want to say propaganda, but like, you know, it's, um, it's media videos. It's advertising that they're doing these things at CERN, right? And so this one that I saw um, years ago was they were like basically doing this very dark ritual where they had like goat heads and half-dressed people and like they were dancing around and rolling around and like there was this ritual type effect to it. So it was just very dark in my eyes. Uh, why, if you are scientists and engineers and physicists, do you need to go that far and do these things? However, the thing that people, here's the caveat, the thing that people don't realize is that CERN, the thing that most people don't tell you about CERN is that it is partially um there's parts of CERN dedicated to uh the arts uh arts and technology right and i think that's a good space that needs to be also um you know talked about and looked at and uh so i think that might be why they do the quote unquote the rituals that conspiracy theorists talk about so you can go Google all this stuff. It's not going to bring you, I mean, it'll probably bring you crazy, crazy conspiracy theories. However, um, you can at least know what I'm like referring to. Dance opera sym symmetry video that was filmed there. You can Google that also. Um, there was, again, a lot of uh, ritualistic dancing going on. Uh, and then also, I think the biggest thing that conspiracy theorists will tell you is that um, there is a statue of Lord Shiva, which was a gift from India because I don't know if you know or not, but that is the God of destruction in Hinduism. And Shiva destroys the universe at the end of days. So why would they want it display displayed proudly? I don't know, I guess it's considered art. I just don't understand why they would want to have a a symbol of destruction at a place where they're supposed to be, uh, you know, doing research and finding the origins of, of things and so on and so forth. And some people might say different. So as of this past week, there were, there were major news breaks uh, and publications about the future of CERN. Uh, CERN aims to build a 20 billion $20 billion collider uh, to unlock the secrets of the universe. Um, and this was from a, um, an article, Research Lab submits plan for next generation model at least three times the size of that large hydrogen, hydrogen collider, the LHC. Um, they CERN drew up plans for the next machine, the future, it's called the Future Circular Collider, FCC. Uh, they did those plans back in 2019. Machine would have a 91 kilometer circumference and aim to smash subatomic particles together at a maximum energy of 100 TeV or tetra electron volt, tetra electron volts. The large uh, hydrogen collider achieves maximum energies of 14 TeV currently. So they want to go from 14 TeV with their, their busting particles at right now to 100 TeV. I don't think it's gonna be done until like 2050, the year 2050, right?
as I was saying earlier, there are these conspiracy theories. We talked a little bit about the multiverse conspiracy theory, right? Mandela effect. And what does that have to do with CERN? So the Mandela effect, if you don't know, is named after Nelson Mandela. Some people thought that he had passed away. Uh, they remember it vividly, uh, collectively as a group, people from all over the world um, thought he had passed away and he hadn't. And so people were like, well, this is crazy. So the, the Mandela effect is named after, of course, Nelson Mandela. So if, if it's in Geneva, does that mean it's funded by European countries? Yes, there's like 200 countries, I think, that fund that fund it. The reason that uh, they, they wanted to do it in, uh, in Geneva um, is because they, the founders wanted a place where they could do their research in peace for the, the, the sake of research and not have politics involved. Although I do find that if you are funded by other countries, no matter where we're at, um, there are going to be some some type of politics involved. But I think their intentions to start um, way back in like 1954 or wherever, whenever, whenever it was, their intentions were to not be able to be manipulated by whoever was funding them. I haven't done a, a ton of research on the, the funding portion of what do they get in return for the funding, right? So is it kind of like Antarctica where all of the countries kind of have like a flag on Antarctica surface, allegedly, and it's kind of off limits and all countries and continents understand that. So I think the thinking about CERN is the same way. I think it's the same thing where everybody kind of just knows like this is how it is. Don't try to influence it. Look at this little guy. Look at him. He's shaping up to be cute. So people, I think, believe the conspiracy theory about like time continuum and time loops and things. Um, some people feel like you keep reliving the same thing over and over and um, ha trying to create different outcomes, which, I mean, hey, when you start to say things like energy doesn't dissolve, it doesn't die it's not created nor does it die it just kind of keeps recirculating one might say okay i could see how that's plausible right it gets really weird it gets really weird when you start delving into it and like i don't think our human brains can really understand all of that i just don't i just don't it, i mean it's hard for me maybe it's just my human brain i don't know y'all let me know if y'all can understand it or not so this is why people, there's conspiracy theories, okay? Because people are like, look, if y'all scientists and physicists are saying like, y'all collided these particles and there are now black holes, or at least were black holes in these, um, in these large hydrogen colliders, then where do they go? Like why? You can't, I don't, how do you create a black hole on earth? I just don't think it's a thing. And I, it's, I don't know, maybe we're just taught to believe whatever, like I'm not a physicist. I don't know much about string theory. Hell, I don't even know like the chemical makeup of most of the food that I eat, if I'm being completely honest. So who am I to question the fact that a scientist or a physicist said that they created a black hole on earth. Who, who am I, right? But then you start thinking about this and as we were taught in school, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's kind of impossible. If nothing else, if you see something or hear something and you say, that doesn't sound right, or how can that be? It causes you a spark to start doing more research, I think, personally. Now, whether or not you say that that's wasted time or whatever the case, that's your business, that's your prerogative. I said the reason is that a black hole has a gravitational pull, yes, and it would suck all the matter into it, yes. 
So it's impossible. Uh, yes, you, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. But we've been taught to not ask questions or to not question authoritative figures. And so that's, ba I mean, it's basically the essence of uh, like authoritative fallacies. And so, um, look, some tell me not to be into like astrology or astronomy and all that. I'm an Aries. And so like, apparently we're like stubborn and uh, pig headed and like, you know, just kind of do our own thing and yada yada. And so I think that's part of it. And maybe it's just in my genetic makeup uh, to kind of question authority. Uh oh, there we go. I'm having trouble over here. Uh oh, uh oh. Everybody's always gonna want pretty stuff for their house. If we start getting like cooped up in the house because we don't have a job to go to. I'm struggling today. Let's put some flowers in. We're still here, you know? Like, we're still here. We're still doing the thing. So the Mandela effect, I didn't really get too much into it. So if you've ever heard people say there's a there was a cornucopia in, in the Fruit of the Loom logo, do you remember the peanut butter Jiffy? Or has it always been Jif to you? One of the other one, one of the other Mandela effects is that people remember um, logos being a certain way, and they're actually not, and never have been. But also in like pop culture, people remember things like in Star Wars, for instance, scene where uh, Darth Vader and uh, Luke are like fighting, kinda, and Darth Vader says. Uh, Luke, I am your father, because people say, Luke, I am your father, like in the fans and stuff to make their voices go silly. It's actually, he, Darth Vader does not say, Luke, I am your father. He says, no, I am your father. He doesn't say Luke, but people swear up and down and will go to bat and will like stand and die on that hill where he said, I am, Luke, I am your father. And then I saw a video the other day, and nowadays I talk about this all the time, you don't know what's real with CGI and um, with special effects and things like that. It's hard to tell what's real and what's not. Um, and so I saw this guy, he actually pulled out a VCR tape, like a VHS tape, and had a, had a Star Wars movie on it, and I had actually said, uh, Luke, I am your father. And like this guy that's playing this video has like on a hat and a hoodie and glasses. Like he doesn't want to be seen because he doesn't want the government to come for him. But government, y'all don't come for me either, okay? Y'all know my, my search history. Y'all see it. Y'all see all that crazy stuff I'll be looking at when it comes to conspiracy theories. Y'all just label me as crazy and keep it moving. Keep it trucking, okay? If they come for us, we talking about drawers and peanut butter. <laughs> Look. They, we know too much. What was I even saying? What was I saying? Probably nothing of importance whatsoever, but but some say because CERN's been messing around and colliding those particles that they're colliding universes and because there's multiverses and um, you know time loops and time continuums. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's alleged um, that because that's happening, that's why our our worlds are colliding and we're remembering things a certain way. Sex in the city is one of them. Some people remember it being sex in the city and it's sex and the city or vice versa. I swear it was that. That's my thing is I don't, I can't remember, I can't remember for certain very vague things. So if it's not on my radar and it's not like make or break my life, I'm not gonna remember if it was one way or the other, but if it had something to do with um, some specific moment in my life, I might be on that hill where I'm like, no, it was definitely like this. It was definitely this, X, Y, Z or whatever. And memories fade, like memories, I think, um, I don't even think some things are admissible like in court because 
you know, memories can can be jarred and misrepresented and, you know, so on and so forth. And I'm really fascinated by all of this, um, like, about conspiracy theories and, you know, free thinking. All right, so I think I'm almost done. All right. Okay, y'all. I think I'll probably add some stuff back here just to kind of cover, just to kind of come out a little bit. And I guess I will see y'all next time. I sure love y'all. I hope y'all have a great weekend. And y'all be safe, drink your water, and mind your business. <laughs> I'll see y'all next time for Crafting and Conspiracies. Bye.